Hello, my name is Adam Dillman. The topic of this GeneMarker webinar is relationship testing and cluster analysis. This is an advanced topic in GeneMarker. If you're not yet familiar with GeneMarker, I recommend that you first watch the GeneMarker introductory webinar and then proceed on to this webinar. In this webinar, I'll show you how the relationship testing application in GeneMarker can be used to create and export pedigrees, confirm known relationships amongst your samples, and find relationships when the parentage of your samples is unknown. Later, we'll cover the cluster analysis application, particularly creating, saving, and exporting dendrograms. To get started, load your traces by clicking File, Open Data. Click Add and then navigate to your traces. Select your traces and then click Open and OK. After reviewing your raw data, begin data processing by clicking the green arrow or by navigating to Project Run. Select the appropriate panel, size standard, standard color, and analysis type, or simply click the corresponding pre-save template. Many chemistries, for example those involving microsatellites or SSRs, often require custom panels. For more information on how to make custom panels, please see the Creating Custom Panels webinar or view Chapter 5 of the User Manual. Make your selections and click Next. As is usually the case, the default settings of this page of the Run Wizard will suit most chemistries and kits. Simply click Next and OK. I'll remind you that size color results are displayed on the left and allele call results are displayed on the right. We can see that size calling was successful from the green icons to the left of the each sample name. As with all other gene marker applications, it is important that all questionable size and allele calls be reviewed prior to beginning analysis. Once this is completed, you're ready to head to the relationship testing application. Just navigate to Applications, Relationship Testing. This opens the relationship testing window. This application can be used to confirm known relationships between your samples or find relationships between samples of unknown origin. I'll start by demonstrating the first case. You can display your samples by clicking on this Samples tab to the right, and you'll see that I've uploaded samples whose relationships are known. This is often the case with pure breeding animal lines, for example. I've named my samples to reflect their known relationships. Each family is represented by a different number, and males, females, and offspring are represented by M, F, and O, respectively. It's recommended that you also use a similar, easy-to-understand naming convention. To test these relationships, we can proceed to the Family Group Tool, which is located under Tools, Family Group Tool. The Family Group Tool organizes your samples into their corresponding families, and then automatically creates a pedigree for each family. To use this tool, however, we must first instruct the program on how to properly organize our sample files, and this is where naming conventions become particularly important. In the Match by Sections column below, we must first input the column that corresponds to a group identifier. In this case, group identification could be thought of as the family, and my family information is in column 2, so I'll input a 2 into this field. The identifier by section could be thought of as the family member type, and that information is in column 3, so I'll input a 3 here. Finally, to the right, you'll see that I have a naming convention for children, fathers, and mothers. In this case, mothers are females, fathers are males, and children are offspring. When you've made your selections, click Match. Now we can see that the program has correctly organized my samples into seven distinct families, and distinguished their family members as children, fathers, and mothers. Returning to the relationship testing window, we can now see that the family drop-down menu has been populated with our seven families, and by selecting one, you'll see that I'm taken to that family's corresponding pedigree. Notice that as I scroll over a node, the corresponding sample file to the right is highlighted. You'll also notice that the perimeter of individual three, the offspring, is highlighted in red. When I scroll over the node, we can see why. There are numerous marker conflicts between the offspring and one or more parents. Simply double-click on a marker to be taken to its corresponding electropharogram. Here the source of the conflict becomes even more apparent, as we can see that the offspring 
has alleles 10 and 11. The female or mother sample can account for allele 11, but the father is incapable of accounting for allele 10 or 11. If we click on another marker, we can see a similar pattern. Again, the offspring has alleles 10 and 12, the female has 10, and the father has neither 10 nor 12. Thus, it's likely that this child is not the legitimate offspring of this male sample. If I navigate to a different family, for example, family six, I can see a different scenario. Here, the offspring is not highlighted in red, and this is because no conflict exists between it and its parents. This indicates that based on the data uploaded so far, this is indeed the legitimate offspring of this male and female sample. An alternative way of viewing genotypes is by going to Tools, Genetics Analysis Settings. Here you can click Display Genotypes. And this allows you to see markers and their alleles directly next to their corresponding nodes. And if I navigate back to Family 3, you can see that conflicting alleles are highlighted in red. Nodes can be edited by simply right-clicking on them and selecting Edit Node. Here there are a variety of options that allow you to modify this individual. Right-clicking on a node also allows you to add a child or add a mate. Entirely new pedigrees can be made by simply going to File, New Pedigree. Finally, pedigrees can be exported by simply right-clicking and selecting Export Image. Here you can save the pedigree as a PNG file. I've now uploaded a new set of samples whose relationships are unknown. Uh, this is typical for sampling of wildlife or plant populations, for example. I'd now like to show you how GeneMarker can be used to find relationships within these samples. To get started, we must first load these samples into our database. To do this, simply go to Database, Save to Database. Click Submit, and when you see the confirmation message, just click OK and close. Next, we must load in the allele frequency table associated with this population. To do this, simply go to Tools, Allele Frequency. Choose your allele frequency table from the drop-down menu, or upload one by clicking on this folder icon. For more information about formatting allele frequency tables, please see Chapter 7 of the User Manual. When you've made your selections, click Save. Then click OK and OK. Finally, we'll return to the Family Group tool. My goal here is to simply create a node for each individual. To do this, I'll ungroup my samples by clearing these identifier fields. Then I'll just click Match and OK. Now you can see I have a node for each individual. I can now find the family of an individual by simply right-clicking on their corresponding node and selecting Find Family. I can now see to the right that the program has used an identity by descent calculation to determine this sample's most likely relative in a variety of categories. For example, I can see that samples 9 and sample 7 are likely to be either a mother or a daughter. I can see that sample 8 is likely to be a full sibling. Interestingly, I can also see that sample 10 is likely to be the same individual as this sample 1. In other words, I randomly sampled the same individual twice. To look at another individual, simply select that individual's node, right-click, and again select Find Family. These report tables can be exported as text files by simply right-clicking and selecting Export Table. One final and relatively simple application I'd like to show you is the Cluster Analysis application. To reach it, just go to Applications, Clustering Analysis. Here we can see that a dendrogram has automatically been created for my samples. The settings of this dendrogram can be accessed by simply clicking on the Settings icon in the upper left-hand corner. To learn more about these settings and the Clustering Analysis application, please see Chapter 7 of the User Manual. Finally, to save this dendrogram as a PNG image, just click the Save icon in the upper left. Thank you for watching this Gene Marker webinar. In this webinar, we covered relationship testing and cluster analysis using GeneMarker. More information about these applications can be found in Chapter 7 of the User Manual. Related webinars that you might find useful include Creating Custom Panels, the Merge Project Tool, and Kinship Analysis. 
For more information or for a free 30-day trial of GeneMarker and other Soft Genetics products, please visit softgenetics.com or email info at softgenetics.com. For technical support questions, please write to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. Thank you for watching.